Everyone has been on top of me. What happened yesterday? I streamed at What do you mean? No, it ended at like a 10. Did it? I streamed from like 7 o'clock to like 10 o'clock-ish. 11 o'clock, depending. It depends. It's like, it depends on, the, on, on, on what's going on. But I, I normally start at 7 and around 10 or 11-ish now. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, everybody has been telling me that SCP Explains is like... the. Uh, I quote... Who was it? I quote, it's like bottom of the barrel when it comes to SCP Explains. I'm like, okay, a little harsh, I guess. Uh, so I got recommended more Dr. Bob. I'm like, I freaking, I reacted to Dr. Bob. But when I freaking, all right, sure. So I, I, I'm like, all right, more Dr. Bob, I guess. Because everyone's, everyone's, everyone's like, yeah, stop reacting to SCP Explains. Stop reacting to SCP, do Dr. Bob. All right, fine, here's Dr. Bob. Freaking A. <laughs> Dr. Bob, you have so many fans in my community, apparently. You're welcome. An elderly woman <laughs> wakes in the middle of the night to the sounds of chaos just outside. Admittedly, she stumbles Dr. Out of Bob her bed has some of the best storytelling like rushes skills to check on, yeah, the cows on YouTube. In her field. I love his voice acting. From a distance in the dark, the way he explains she can see the, one the, of the, the cows lying on its side, dead. Standing over it is a fox, but something is wrong with it. The animal is standing on two legs, Using its paw-like hands to tear at the cow's corpse. It's not a fox, it's a furry! And screams. It is the late 1940s, and the world is still reeling from the destruction and devastation of the Second World War. While nations are trying please? desperately to rebuild, and citizens are mourning the fallen, the we'll SCP Foundation later next has time. no don't time worry. to grieve. Anomalous threats don't come to a stop just because the rest of the world is trying to put its collective pieces back together. For the members of the 5th Squad of the Eastern Division of the SCP Foundation, a global tragedy must take a back seat to smaller, localized, and potentially anomalous tragedy in the form of several unusual deaths in Busan, Korea. Three agents are dispatched to the area and told to investigate That's cool while to think posing about the SCP Foundation still, still when they first arrived, working they on hear anomalies about a troubling even during eyewitness the war. account that has steered local authorities in the direction of animal attacks. An elderly woman saw something eating one of her cows, a mix between a fox and a human. Naturally, the authorities have written her what off. What I tell you, it was a freaking furry. her story rings true to one of the agents. He can remember tales his grandmother once told him, sadistic old bat that she was. Stories of fox people with razor-sharp claws and fangs glistening with fresh blood. The other two agents have similar cultural stories to like. share. Folk tales about women who were foxes in disguise, living amongst hapless humans. Some of the stories were romantic, about fox okay. wives marrying human husbands, having children and families. Others I am in. were horrible, too horrible to repeat. The three agents can only hope they haven't stumbled into the latter type of story. But when yeah, has I want a the wife who can. Can I have the wife who kind, the one that wants to, to marry me? Outcome. The three men begin to comb the area, searching for any evidence of this creature. A fox I don't know how I feel about my wife eating cows, cows, though. That's a little bit like. Perhaps. Humans like, we can just well. go to a steakhouse, girl. You Before don't gotta go out the field all, like that. They stumble upon a beautiful young woman yes! sitting serenely under a waterfall. I freaking called it! Clad in nothing more than a light robe, she tries to nervously hide her bare feet at the sight of the strange men. But she doesn't do a very good job. The three agents can plainly see, in place of the feet of a human woman, she has paws covered it in a furry fur. The feet of a fox. This must be a young, inexperienced creature of her kind, they realize. Otherwise, how could they have tracked her down so easily? If the men were smarter, less blinded by lust, laziness, and an eagerness for simple answers, they might have asked more questions. Questions like, why did we find her so quickly? Why isn't she hiding? How did she get close enough to kill those people when she's so bad at concealing herself? But they don't stop and think, don't well, stop to ask you? those questions, and that oversight will be Instant what seals their fate. After realizing that the agents intend her no apparent harm, the fox woman smiles warmly at them. She invites the men to come back to her cottage with her for a hot meal and the chance to meet more of her kind. At first, Agent 3 is unsure about the offer, but the other two accept eagerly, swayed by the majority vote and reminding himself that they are three armed men against one slender, if anomalous, woman. He relents and accepts the oh, invitation Oh yeah, because well. people who could transform into foxes and other creatures have like absolutely never been shown to have super strength. Spider's web without the slightest inkling of what's to come. When they to reach the fair. cottage, they find it modest but homey, rustic but warm. It Don't worry, boys. I got you. You're welcome. 
undeniable charm, the same <laughs> charm shared by the woman who led them there. She sits them at the dining table, the picture of delighted hospitality. She insists on serving them, and they are all too happy to let her. Oh, they're she all pours dead. Them cups Every of single one of them is freaking and dead. dishes out bowls of rice, pickled turnips, and perfectly seasoned meat. After dinner, with full bellies and sleepy, wine-fogged minds, nah, the son. agent... Nah, son. All right, this is about the time where I would get out. You know why? Because if you got all this amazing food, why the AG double hockey sticks are you out there chewing up on a cow's neck in the middle of the night? Nah, that means she likes blood. F forget that. I'm out. Nah. Just decide to stay the night mm, in nope. her guest beds. After all, you can trick me that? in every way the except for food, woman. No harm. And she has I no reason to feel threatened or try to attack them in any I know way, my eats. they'll see about containment options in the morning, after a good night's rest. Sometime in the night, Agent 3 wakes to find Agent 1 is gone. Strangely, Eaten. he must have gotten up to use the bathroom in the night, or rather, to make use of a bush outside, since there is no formal bathroom in the cottage. The thought reminds Agent 3 of his own full bladder, and he tiptoes out into the night to relieve himself. As he nah, stumbles through the darkness, he, was about to, he, he suddenly was about to step hears into a muffled hentai. The wet slap oh, of flesh against flesh. He did. All at once, it hits him. Agent One must be out here, and from the sound of it, he isn't alone. Surely he wouldn't. But up ahead, he can make out the silhouettes of Agent One and the Fox Woman together. Agent One getting it That's in. A Foundation ethics violation of some kind. It has to be. Agent Three opens his mouth to say something when Agent One suddenly collapses to the ground in front of the Fox Woman. As his oh. eyes adjust to the dark. Agent 3 can see that his fallen Bro, friend's shirt kiss. is stained with blood. Left him left his throat. Left, left his lungs out. completely. <laughs> in her clawed empty. hand, the oh! fox woman holds Agent 1's liver, steaming liver? with body heat in the cool Ew. night air. You like liver? She I freaking hate liver. It tastes nasty. Examining it with a hungry glint in her eye. Sorry, girl, you and I then can't be together. She opens her mouth. Not if you like sticks liver. Out her tongue, Yuck. And swallows the I mean, liver I don't mind liver. I eat liver, you know, but The sight reminds Agent 3 of a snake devouring a mouse. It depends, it depends. Like, I want to eat liver by itself. It's gotta be like in a soup or something. Overwhelm his system all at once. <laughs> he watched as the fox woman lowered one extra sharp fingernail, using it like a scalpel, and began to cut at the fallen man's skin. All at once, his legs are able to move again. He sprints back toward the cottage, shaking Agent 2 awake. Agent 3 can't quite get his words together. His thoughts scrambled from the horror he just witnessed, but he manages to get one coherent sentence out. We need to leave. Now, before Agent 2 can ask what the hell is going on, Agent 1 walks into the room as if nothing ever nah, happened. Son. Much to Agent 3's shock, the man doesn't have a gaping hole where his liver should be. Start That's blasting! Impossible. You start blasting wait, now! His eyes, they're glowing yellow. That's not an SCP Foundation agent. Something is terribly wrong. Agent 3 doesn't have time to explain to the other agent start what's blasting. happening. He doesn't have time to think. All he has time to do is draw his weapon and fire at the imposter. Yeah! As anyone might do in this maddening situation, Be Agent gone, 2 draws Fox. his weapon, pointing it at 3 and ordering him to put the weapon away. 3 tries to explain, to convince him that the man he just shot is not their friend, but the Fox in disguise. He won't listen, promising to put Agent 3 down like a mad dog for killing their comrade. That's when the Fox sees her opening. She grabs That's hold it, of Agent 2 from behind, That's knocking his the gun for out of his hand, stupid. causing it to discharge. Agent ditch 3 cries out in pain as the bullet pierces his flesh. Only oh, his now upper you, now shoulder, just three stooges. Not this. a fatal wound, but it still hurts like absolute That ain't your hell. leg! You run! He collapses you can to run. the ground from the pain, screaming, oh, you stupid while the fox too. Okay, laughs never mind. at his misery. It's a truly demonic run? sound. Run? A loud, high hey, cackle. Or start blasting more. Has ever heard it, it, uh, the bullet obviously hurt her. Start blasting! He has to get away from it, away from her. Put something between him and this monster. Slap he dragged her. himself into the living room, pulling the rice paper screen door shut. Ask her to marry him, you! That typically makes him get away from me. Look at her. Unfortunately, another horror awaits him there. On the dining table, laid out like a roast pig ready for carving, ah! is another agent, a man he and the others saw at the base of the mountain a day before. But now, his eyes are wide and glassy, his skin pale and lifeless. He spots the empty bowls, and all at once, the sickening truth washes over him. Their dinner. That meat wasn't pork or beef. It was human. Oh, and they didn't they eat it with rice, but with maggots crawling over the meat, slippery and white. 
His stomach can't help but empty Wait, itself. Wait, what? How the frick you confuse it with floor, rice with maggots? He sees a maggot still alive in the vomit. No time to think about it anymore. No time to is sit that with like the a, horrors and let like them paralyze him. He needs a weapon, and fast. Yeah, that had to be a freaking off illusion. A piece of a wooden beam, breaking it into a jagged edge. He angles it just right, just in time. So you the left your, the tear you the left your force door. multiplier, but a, a the piece of, edge of the stick. Beam into her stomach and makes a run to be fair, I also wanted to stab her with my stick too earlier, but I mean, it's just not the time for it, my dude. Fighting through the agony of his gunshot wound. Suddenly, the sound of running water, a welcome oasis in the dark and the terror. He stumbles onto the riverbank, attempting to wade through the water and cross. But he has too many forces working against him. The pitch black night, the fear, the pain, the confusion from the blood loss. Go around it. He slips on the wet rocks, hits his head, and is swept away this by the This is your rapids. fault. You, this is your fault. He floats down the river for at least half a mile. I don't expect you to be a bear grills or nothing, but you're a you're a SCP agent for goodness sake. As he drags himself Act onto like dry it. land, heaving and gasping, he realizes something. He recognizes where he is. The van is just a few feet away. He has a sudden revelation. Fire. In the stories he heard growing up, fire was oh, always yeah? the key to defeating an evil burn, force. Burn, baby, burn. He doesn't have the keys, but that doesn't matter. He busts through the window and opens up the back. There it is. A foundation issue defoliant projector. Better know. Oh, yeah? Go, as a good old is that standard issue? I will, how do I join the SCP Foundation? Woman manages to track what? Down again. Is that just a standard issue? As Police have shotguns. SCP Foundation agents. Out of the flame throwers. <laughs> eyes gleaming with menace. What's up, baby? You're looking real to hot tonight. Hell on the monster that killed his friends and fed him their flesh. Several days later, a Foundation retrieval team manages to track down Agent 3. They find him with the Fox Woman, whom they manage to capture and bring into custody. He is a shadow of himself, pale, sweaty, body fighting off a severe infection. He's quickly taken to a hospital. He survived, though! He survived, though! The Foundation is That's able how to you do it, boys! Woman, who is designated. If a woman ever tries to intimidate you, you just show her your flamethrower. She might not let you go, but she won't kill you. <laughs> SCP-953. You gotta show. You gotta show you're the apex. humanoid. About SCP-953. Dating a advice few with things Oz are the certain. She is a fe female red fox. You ever, you ever want to get a girlfriend? Just show her your flamethrower. See, she ate the other two dudes. Around her left my boy alive. Into nine separate Left him so weak. Like, you know, you know it wasn't like. They were probably having it all nighters. Forms. You know what I'm saying? Most commonly. She takes on the shape of a beautiful Korean woman. Whenever in human <laughs> form, however, she does still maintain at least one fox-like characteristic, such as ears, paws, tail, eyes, or mannerisms. If she is able, she oh, will yeah, that was a mannerism, was it? through various methods of disguise, such as clothing, hats, and hairstyles. In addition to her polymorphic abilities, SCP-953 is observed to possess other supernatural abilities. She has the power of suggestion and telepathy. She can convince others of falsehoods, concealing her nature and the nature of things around her. While the Foundation is discovering okay, this, so it was Agent like 3 is illusion. busy recovering from his injuries. When he is discharged from the hospital, he sits down for an interview with a Foundation assistant director. He lays out the Foundation's plans to terminate the Fox Woman, given her malicious nature and unknown levels of power. Agent 3 vehemently opposes- Wait, what? But the SCP Foundation literally never, ever, 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 ever wants to destroy stuff, except when they do, for some reason. Isn't that weird how the SCP Foundation is all about not destroying stuff until suddenly they are, like with the with the evil lizard creature and and the shy guy and this lady, like for some reason? Which <laughs> is this choice, begging them not it's to not do Ruto. so. He advises them to contain her. I would have I would have gotten a lot more interested in Naruto if 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 the fox demon was a chick cautious about how they do so. Ordinary methods, he advises, will not be effective. He pleads with the Foundation to consider the creature's nature, saying, she's spiteful. Every little slight in her eyes, she saves up. And the only way she knows how to repay an insult is death. Chaining her to the wall like an animal, when she gets out, and she will get out, she's going to kill everyone who had the slightest thing to do with it. She won't settle for anything less. He gives suggestions for what Oh yeah, obviously. So instead, instead, what we should do is 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 not do that. You know, the whole keeping her away and, and and making sure she can't hurt anybody else. Let's not do that. Let's leave her alive 
and preserve the possibility of her not going on a murderous rampage again. Because somehow keeping her alive is going to prevent that, right? Got it. What the Foundation can Makes do sense. to contain the creature, but Logic. above all, insists that she be kept alive. At this point, the interviewer points out that the agent has been visiting SCP-953 in her containment cell. Oh, bro, it's down bad! The agent's motives, suggesting he might have Stockholm Syndrome. The agent refuses to consider that possibility. In return, the interviewer has him taken to Site-51 for psychological analysis. Hit him with the forget the juice! The containment procedures are left unchanged. The interviewer includes this note with the transcription of the interview. On a side note, I am appalled by the level of superstition expressed by the agent throughout the course of this interview. I am recommending that his suggestions regarding containment be disregarded for a more scientific approach. We're not old Korean fishwives here. I'm sure we can think of something more effective than dogs and needles. Not long after the interview, SCP-953 escapes from custody, killing several Foundation personnel in the process. They managed to recapture her, but she escaped again, and again, and again. After her sixth escape, the Foundation is unable to track her down. She remains unseen for years, sneaking around under the radar, as the what Foundation is this, their ultimate for freaking the inevitable bloodbath that will ensue when she gets bored enough. Years pass, and the date of the annual Yifcon rolls around again. Oh, go get out this of is here! Of little <laughs> the Foundation. Why would they be monitoring the goings-on of a small furry convention? Well, maybe they should be. I mean, that makes sense. No She's about to go for a fox get herself to some poor sim. Unnoticed. If anything, with only her ears I and tail showing through her uniform, it might be me. I'll be completely form, honest. She's a I mean, bit underdressed compared to the rest of the attendees. A few convention goers stop to admire the beautiful woman with the reddish brown fox ears and tail, but most of them see. Don't this even is give why it's dangerous to be a furry. Unfortunately for the convention's attendees, because she then a sexy fox woman might put your meat in her mouth. Small businesses by purchasing some art or a body pillow. She passes out cards with her room number on them to various strangers, inviting them to an after-hours party in her room. With her friendly face and gorgeous smile, how could they say no? After all, it's a friendly event, and nothing bad ever happens at YifCon. When a dozen anthropomorphic animal enthusiasts arrive at SCP-953's room, A dozen? What are they planning on running a train on her? What is this? Still, they're excited to socialize, and thrilled to have been invited to an after-hours party. They don't notice her sliding the deadbolt into place behind them, placing her body between them and their only exit. An hour later, another hotel guest calls the police to alert them to the sounds of horrific screams coming from down the hall. But when the police arrive, they can't hear anything. The place is eerily quiet. As they approach the offending room, they hear the sounds of a respectfully tame party inside, and a beautiful oh, woman the answers video. the door, well, assuring we'll them that out, everything is fine. The officers turn and leave without a second thought, and as the victims inside the room continue to scream, the cops can't hear a thing. They don't know it, but they're trapped in her thrall. The next morning, Just a, a hotel housekeeper knocks on the door of the ill-fated room. No one answers, and there isn't a do not disturb sign on the door, so she lets herself in. As soon as she opens the door, she regrets it. There, so engrossed in her gleeful bloodlust that she doesn't even notice the intrusion, is SCP-953, surrounded by dozens of corpses. The housekeeper calls 911, but after stuttering out a few words on the situation, a clawed hand grabs hold of her hair and yanks well, her no, back Well, no, sir, why would you call the police the right freaking next to her? Again. She's got Not big, uh, big old fox ears. Fortunately, it was enough information to alert the Foundation to the situation at hand. Unfortunately, by the time they arrive on the scene, there are over two dozen corpses littering the hotel floor. One is stuffed into a mattress, another because hanging why? over a shower okay. curtain rod, one rolled up in a carpet, and another is strewn across a banquet table. I love how she Any rolls up in a carpet like she's going to get rid of a mafioso style. Like, what is that? What are you going to do with to wipe that? Their memories. The convention concludes early, under the cover story of a dangerous gas leak. During the chaos, the Foundation managed to bring SCP-953 into custody. This time, they acknowledge the need to amend the containment procedures they have been using. They can't let her escape again. Today, SCP-953 is kept in a Type 4 containment cell at Site-17. She has provided the following necessities. Fresh liver daily, clean drinking water and plenty of it, a futon and clean bedding for it, which is laundered weekly. When she is on her best behavior and has been especially non-violent, she is occasionally presented with a small luxury item, such as a book, a dessert, or a bottle of plum wine. <laughs> 
direct human contact with SCP-953 has been strictly prohibited due to her psychic abilities. Shut Delivery up, of her food Close or any other items Bam. is to be carried out by an automated robotic assistant. In addition to her physical containment, psychological measures with a folkloric origin have been employed. The entrance to her containment chamber is lined with open cage dog kennels containing Korean Jindo or American Foxhound dogs. Oh, really? She will not approach any canines out of an apparent aversion, especially when one is barking. SCP-953 is considered extremely hostile, dangerous, and armed at all times. <laughs> given the nature of yeah, her racist and flaws like guard, and doggos. numerous deadly abilities. I found this addendum attached to her official file concerning folklore control procedures as they pertain to SCP-953. As a reminder, staff assigned to SCP-953 are to follow all instructions for interacting with the subject, no matter how odd or arbitrary they may seem. Keep in mind that the people of Asia interacted with these beings for centuries before we came onto the scene. What we think of as fairy tales were their version of special containment procedures. Dude, and somebody banged Personally, one of I them. I hope to Apparently. never encounter SCP-953 under any circumstances. Though, as I say that, a disquieting thought crosses my mind. It's entirely possible I have at some point. Oh yeah, Dr. Bob, you go to YiffyCon a lot? After all, she is capable of shifting her I shape in countless Bob ways like that. and is a master cool, of trickery and deception. I may very well have crossed paths with her before. I suppose yeah. I'll never What's know here? for sure. All I know is that I still have my liver. For now. And for that, I am very, very grateful. Check out the Dr. Bob Patreon and become I'm a junior researcher today. Like I would. Now I go think. and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-4966, Tabioka, Devourer of Souls, Consumer of Secrets, Lord of Munchies. Yeah, I think I think I can fix her. I think I think we have a chance. It's gonna take some time, you know, but I think with some counseling and whatnot, you know. Ayo, be sure to join the crew. Please like, follow, and subscribe. And hey, if you like that video, you should check out this stuff.